You might remember in the previous lesson we learned about natural disasters and extreme weather. When we watch the news or read the news on our smartphones, we can sometimes learn about a future natural disaster or extreme weather event so we can prepare for it better. Let's imagine that I read the news and there's a good possibility that there's going to be a blizzard in my city. I know for sure that if a blizzard comes to my city, I will stay home because there will be snow everywhere and it will be really cold. Let me give you another example. Let's imagine that I read the news and there's a good chance that there's going to be a thunderstorm tonight. I know for sure that if there is a thunderstorm tonight, I won't play outside. If you play outside during a thunderstorm, that can be a little bit dangerous. You might notice that I talked about some specific situations in the future, like what I will do if a blizzard comes to my city, or what I won't do if there is a thunderstorm in my city tonight. When we talk about specific situations in the future that depend on a very particular condition in order to be true, we use a verb form called the first conditional. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about how we use the first conditional and also how we form it. Let's take a look at some examples of the first conditional. If a blizzard comes to my city, I will stay home. You can think of this sentence as a prediction about the future. We don't know what will happen. But we do know one thing. A blizzard must come to my city in order for me to stay home. The first part of the sentence is called the condition. The second part is called the result. If the condition is true, then the result is also true. If the condition is false, then the result is also false. Now let's take a look at the form of the first conditional. In general, the structure of the first conditional is if plus the subject, which is blizzard in this sentence, plus the verb in the present simple tense, which in this sentence is comes. Then, to separate the first and second parts of the sentence, you need a helpful comma. After the comma, it's the subject of the second part plus the verb in the future simple tense, which is will in this sentence, plus the verb in the infinitive form, which in this sentence is stay. In some ways, the first conditional is a little bit complicated, but in one way it's also a little bit flexible because we can change the order of the words in this sentence and the meaning of the sentence will be exactly the same. Now the sentence says, I will stay home if a blizzard comes to my city. Although we change the order of the words, the meaning of the sentence is exactly the same as the one we saw before. What changes is the structure. Now the form of the sentence is the subject plus the future simple verb plus the infinitive verb. And in this sentence we don't need a comma. So after the infinitive verb and the complement of the first part, it's if plus the subject plus the present simple verb. 
I know it might seem a little confusing that we use future simple and present simple in the same sentence, but there's an easy way to remember which one goes in which part of the sentence. In this sentence, it's if a blizzard comes. So as you can see, the present simple always follows if. And you never use if with the future. Let's take a look at another example. Oh no, I just read the news and it said that there's a good chance that there will be a thunderstorm tonight. That's terrible. I wanted to play basketball and run outside with my friends. Oh well, if the storm creates lightning and thunder, I won't play outside. You might remember that the sentence has this structure. If plus the subject plus the verb in the present simple, which in this sentence is creates. Don't forget the helpful comma. Next, it's the subject plus the verb in the future simple plus the verb in the infinitive form. Notice here that the sentence uses the negative form of the future simple. The negative form of the future simple is won't. You can also say will not. Now I'm going to give you a little challenge. I want you to think of a different way to write this sentence. I want you to write another sentence that has exactly the same meaning as this sentence, but the form is different from the original. Remember that I told you, although the first conditional is a little bit complicated, it's also very flexible. I'll give you a minute to write your sentence on a piece of paper. Okay, time's up. Here's the correct answer. I won't play outside if the storm creates lightning and thunder. It has exactly the same meaning as the previous sentence, but we had to swap the condition and the result clause. Because the result clause is first, it's the subject plus the future simple verb plus the infinitive form. Now, we don't need a comma, so after this, it's if plus the subject plus the verb in the present simple tense. Remember, the present simple verb is in the if or condition the clause, and the future simple verb is always in the result part of the sentence. Now you're ready to do some exercises to practice the first conditional. You should complete exercises 7 and 8. Good luck!